Hey there. So this is going to be episode six of building a 3D printer out of a CMM. And without further ado, we're going to start by drilling a freaking hole in it. So have fun. Also, okay. Oh. <lacht> die Unterlegscheibe wird auf jeden Fall groß, die da reinkommt. Ja, die muss auch. Oh, scheiße. Damn, boy. That went perfect. <lacht> Great success. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you saw me doing the first test print on like December 31st. You can see here that I did some objects to uh, get the extruder dialed in and that, that did work pretty much on point. After that I took on the first real part and that was this benchy, which was coming out pretty beautiful up to this point. But then I heard some weird noises and what eventually happened was this glue joint gave up. So today is Sunday the 17th. I finally got a few hours to start working on this again. So okay, let's try to investigate why this was breaking in the first place. I guess there are two possibilities. So if we have a look at the joint, uh, you can see the glue did stay really well on the aluminum surface which was indeed a very rough machined. That seems to be uh, the best choice it did not stick to the granite this good. As you can see I did rough it up before gluing but it seems like the uh, it was somehow filled with the glue that seems to be I, I can't really feel the difference between this and this surface. So if you do a quick math you can see um, the glue area is like 60 by 45 mil that comes out to 2700 square millimeters and if we take a really conservative guess on the strength with, uh, which is given in the data sheet that comes out to almost 40 kilonewtons which can be considered quite a lot but a glue joint is always the weakest in shear mode so if we uh, like pull this edge up and that may be caused because uh, this is creating a leverage from here which is the attack point to here it may have lifted this up but all things considered I would take because the leverage is so short that just the granite itself is not really meant to be glued particularly in this uh, surface condition. So it's way too polished to really give the glue a good surface area. My original plan was to leave this connection untouched. So as I was messing around with uh, these air bearings, I destroyed the uh, the geometry of the uh, of the CMM itself because um, as you can see these air bearings these are these brass plates riding in here can be adjusted with these two set screws they are additional to ones on the bottom air bearing and this one is quite easy to align because I just have to stick a dial indicator to a well known perpendicular or parallel surface in this case and I can tweak this in with the top screws and then have the bottom screws 
just like um, on tension. So that is something I can do myself without any, uh, any special gauges or equipment. But um, the X and Y axis are a whole different story because the further down you go, um, less reference surfaces you have, and it's getting more difficult to adjust all these bearings and not mess it up. Because, you know, <laughs> as you may have noticed, I'm not a certified CMM technician. I just work my way, my way around here. What I wanted to say is I don't want to mess with the whole alignment of this one or this one. But on further investigation, I saw that I pretty much shouldn't be able to destroy this because um, this y-axis granite is at, connected in at least four points. Um, there is this screw, this screw, and this one, which is connected to this uh, steel casting. And I guess these set screws are what uh, balance this whole thing to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Um, also, in terms of perpendicularity in this direction, there seems to be some kind of a, a point where this is um, resting on. And there is some pretension done with this screw. So, my guess is I can take this screw out leave this as is and if I attach everything in here and screw this back into it I shouldn't have messed with any of the alignment at least I hope so
So that's a typical Friday, honestly. Um, so I was doing a really good test print. Um, I've done uh, one hell of a progress. I've put in a real slicer profile that works perfectly. And um, well, I did install the one millimeter nozzle and I was doing a time lapse of the print I did later on. I have to check that. I was watching the the printing of this vase for quite some time, I guess, pretty much till the point of here, I guess. I have to look it up in the time lapse I did. And it is looking amazing. The print is sticking, all my modeling and slicing software worked out perfectly. I can identify all these holes and print around them. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. But because this is a Friday, I was doing some work down there and was running the CNC mill and was away for like 20 minutes. And when I came back up, I saw this. It was still going, but only one axis was was working. So I came back to check what the y-axis was doing, and this one was in alarm mode, which is typically typically a sign of, well, overload or um, wrong voltage or whatever. But anyway, it was standing still, and next thing I saw was this. And this, my brothers, is not looking good. So, without having had a look on it, because I was pretty pissed at that moment, um, and I will not tear this apart today, maybe on Sunday or Monday, but everything was fine when I was watching the print up to this point. So, in a short matter of time, this, this must have gone really bad and to the point where friction was getting that high that this motor um, was shutting down. There's literally no forces involved in moving this whole apparatus and this is a one newton meter uh, servo. Friction forces were getting really high in a short matter of time and I didn't hear anything about it so I have to check the time-lapse footage if I can see anything, but I guess it won't. So, typical Friday, as I said. Uh, we're going to have a look at that later on. Maybe this has something to do with the warpage I had when I milled the slot in here. So, I have to tear this apart. Um, all the alignment I did not too long ago is nuts. <laughs> but... Yeah, tear it apart, have a look at it, and decide from there what my options are. interesting tear down so I will show you the damage right away um, as you can see this is most of the damage just wait one second for it's basically for the all the damage it it has done but as you can see it did a really big groove in here so this is the starting bit that somehow got like stuck in here and well then that escalated quickly other than that all the rest is looking pretty damn fine I guess so this air bearing is apart from the groove in working order. So is this one and so is this one. 
if we compare that I didn't really have the images left on the smartphone when I was debating on the condition of this one so I have to check that on the computer at home and I will put an overlay on here so there is definitely some wear on here the big question is did it occur before everything stalled or is it just like I mean if there is a big chip under here that's compressing it away from the the surface or granite surface well then this has to make make some impact on this side too so I'm not quite sure other than that it seems to be in in a good condition and well I have to to make my mind up about this one here on the granite itself it is looking like this feeling over here you barely feel any dents in the granite itself it's just it appears to be uh, like the brass is melted on here so I'm not worried about the granite itself uh, the only thing I do have to consider is how to get that off here uh, do a search later on on maybe removing it uh, oh. well later on I'll do a search on how to remove that the other than that granite seems to be holding up fine so what to do with all this mess Certainly I've got a lot of options and I really have gone through a few of them but I have to do some way more investigation and look things up before I do a decision on what to do. Well, certainly first thing I want to do is to get a measurement on this one. Maybe we'll do that in a few minutes. Um, to see how much bow I've actually gone in there and after we've done that I certainly got the option to lap this back into original spec which would be somehow the like not the easiest but but I don't know about this um, I will have to lap quite a bit of amount from here I have to reset all these grooves, so after lapping I have to put this back on the, on the mill. Um, then I'm not sure about these rubies in here, if I got enough clearance to... Well, I can't machine them down. This video is somehow awkward because it features just breaking, fixing, repairing stuff. So I will... I think I will do a measurement on this one. Get that... Uh, right after this video publish this and well you guys can leave any comment you want on what I what I did wrong maybe you're an expert or more of an expert as I am um, full disclaimer I am not um, everything I know about this is taught by, by myself and well you can't know everything so if you have any comments on why this setup crashed or what your opinion on this is or how I should repair this or well it doesn't necessarily have to be a repair maybe built from scratch but I'm not done with uh, with the research about this. So I guess this will be another episode on how to break your 3D printer. And I'm really curious on what you type into the comments. Well, and I guess we see you next time when this might be working again or not. We don't know. All right, so that's the setup. 
It is resting in the middle on two 20, 40, 80 blocks and I can sweep the underside. So let me get you mounted. So that's showing a zero and if we sweep along here you can see it is dropping a bit so um, this direction is actually dropping the needle so we got like 25 microns to here the other side of the channel is at zero again and this is showing right about 50 microns. I'm not going all the way, it is still dropping but the actual surface that is in contact with the granite ends about here. So this is where the uh, the screws go in to attach it to the base. And all the way back to zero. So as you can see we do have pretty much a bow in here on both uh, both sides. Uh, to show you that the setup is legit you can go here it's shown right about four at that top point and I try to So as you can see this is sitting pretty pretty good on the table and I do trust this measurement. It also seems to be little little bit dropping right here at the end. But I couldn't see any damage on the uh, on these sides of the air bearing so I guess it's not rocking this way it's just rocking this way I guess this is everything I have to say for now I do have to make my mind up about what to do um, but I would be very happy if someone would have a really good idea about this so after all this is a community project and I just see me doing all the work all the time <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. But any help would be highly appreciated. And yeah, maybe we'll get this guy back on the road again.